I'm like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> give them to oh, ah. Like, See, like for me, I'm fucking Amish. No, I'm dead ass Amish. I've like had a boyfriend in like fifth grade. But like, I like that. You're like the more innocent. I am you. Amish. You're me without all the mistakes and scandals. <laughs> okay. So that's great. Yes. Hi guys, it's Santa Mojo. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. So right now, I am in Orlando, Florida for Playlist Live, and I've been here for like 48 hours or so, and it has been incredible. I've been meeting so many of you guys, as you know. I'm very adamant about being at events and being a creator and meeting my fans. So um, I've been super happy, and that's what I've been doing. I've been doing panels and all that kind of stuff, and I'm having a great time. And so for the first time in two days, I've had like an hour of downtime, and all of my friends just went to eat. And I was sitting in my suite all by myself I decided not to go with them and I would stay here come out on the balcony and film a video for you guys I feel like all weekend just meeting you guys and doing panels and, and talking about how my channel got started and like why I'm in love with YouTube and all that kind of stuff has put me in a very nostalgic mood today And I really just wanted to sit down in front of the camera and do something very OG Which would be to tell you guys some stories So yeah, I sat down and was going to film my sugar daddy story But the Sun is setting right now and I feel like this video is going to get dark very fast and and that story is like three hours long. I have filmed that so many times and still have yet to make it perfect. So that is coming and I know you guys really want that. It will definitely be the most crazy story on my channel once it goes live, but I need some more time for that. So I decided with my short amount of time, I would do something that I've been wanting to do for a while now and just have never gotten around to doing it because it's kind of random. And that is tell you guys some embarrassing stories. So that's what today's video is going to be. It's just gonna be a compilation of stories of times I've embarrassed the fuck out of myself. Hi, I'm Tana, everywhere I go, I am a living, breathing, disgusting, discombobulated, falling apart, horrible mess. And all I can do is embarrass myself. I've been wanting to make this a series on my channel. I have thousands of embarrassing stories. If you guys enjoy this video today and you want me to keep doing it, let me know. So yeah, I'm just gonna hop right into the stories. Before I do, please make sure to subscribe. Click that little bell to turn your notifications on. Once you click that little bell, if it asks you occasionally or all the time, make sure you have my notifications on all the time. As you guys know, I am a struggling, demonetized influencer who doesn't get pushed out to the masses on trending pages like other very fortunate YouTubers so I rely on those notifications obviously so thank you to you guys who have those on and TanaCon merch is out I know I keep talking about it but you guys are crushing it we are literally selling thousands and thousands and thousands it's awesome it's out now I will link that below if you haven't gotten it already and my phone case has finally dropped it's been in my past few videos and I haven't gotten to talk about it I don't want to talk too much about it and right talk you guys this year off but it is all my favorite colors I'm super into dice right now I literally have them around my neck and in my ears as we speak and I wanted to do something that kind of represented Vegas where I'm from and as you guys know I have a shamrock tattoo I love stuff centered around like luck and that kind of stuff but not only that each die adds up to 11 so that makes 11 11 and as you guys know if you follow me on Instagram I see 11 11 like every day I'm super obsessed with like synchronicity so it actually has a bunch of random little meanings to me which my last case did not so and then not only that there's like flames and checkers and it's super trendy super cute so if you haven't gotten that and you want to, they're super protective, sturdy, awesome cases. Love Wildflower. They're going to be out for a very limited time. So if you like it, it's in the description below. Awesome. So the first story I've actually told a few times on tour, and I've been meaning to tell this story to my YouTube channel literally since the moment it happened. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. I'm an idiot. It's an amazing story. It's horrible. I cringe every single time I think about it, but obviously I'm thankful that these horrible things happen to me so I can at least make a story out of it, I guess. So this story happened about a year ago. I didn't live in LA yet. I was staying in Los Angeles filming Escape the Night. We had just wrapped filming one night and my manager Jordan called me and he was like hey I need you to go to this red carpet event with me. It's for this girl's album release party She's super big in Spain. She's releasing her album. She's gonna be singing. It's this huge Spanish pop star She really wants you to go. She invited a bunch of big influencers You should go come to this release party and walk the red carpet and so reluctantly I'm like yes, I don't really love red carpets. They're not my thing I'm not a fucking I'm not a pretty girl. I'm not a candid ass bitch sister loves facetune Sister is not good at red carpets where everyone is like screaming where everyone's like screaming at you and like telling you how to pose and all that kind of shit Like I am just a mess and a little boy and I'm so bad at that stuff My manager obviously looking out for what's best for me wanted me to go so I was like fine I'll go I show up to this red carpet event. That's a lie before showing up to this red carpet event I was a little bit nervous, so I drank Maybe like one-eighth of my hotel's mini bar 
When Tana gets nervous, Tana gets drunk. It's such a bad habit that I'm doing my best to fully break, but obviously there are moments where I be slipping. I show up to the event, I'm a little bit tipsy. My manager decides that we should walk the red carpet first and then go into the event. The way the red carpets work is before the actual red carpet, there's a giant line of all of the talent. I say talent very loosely, I have zero talent. I don't know if you've heard my music, but um, where all of the talent stands before they walk on the red carpets. Everyone has a little paper that says like your name and what you do and like all of your numbers, which in reality is so fucked up that people are like defined by that, but that's the toxicity that is this industry, so whatever. And you wait for the red carpet and then you walk it and then you leave. Me and my manager are waiting in line for me to walk this red carpet. In a very condensed way, I don't really know how else to say it, but I am fucking disgusting. I am a gross ass bitch. If you looked at me, you know, and I was just like, hey, you might think I'm a girl, you might think I shower frequently, you might think I'm hygienic and ladylike, but in reality none of that is fucking true. I'm absolutely the most disgusting human on this planet. But not only that, the closer I get with someone, the more disgusting I get. I will literally shit on you if I am close to you. Like, I will show you my asshole. I don't even know why is everything related to asshole and shit. Like, I, I'm the worst. And so obviously, I spend all of my time with my manager. So him and I are about as close as it can get. He is literally like family to me. We're waiting in line for this red carpet. I'm a little drunk. I hop on my phone, I'm like on Twitter probably like being problematic or something, um, and I kind of zone out on my phone. And I'm under the impression while I'm zoned out on my phone that Jordan is still standing there next to me. But what I didn't know because I was zoned out on my phone, that in that time Jordan had actually walked away to go say hi to someone or do whatever the fuck Jordan does. And this guy came up and stood right next to me and was waiting in line for the red carpet too. So I'm on my phone under the impression that this man next to me is Jordan. And so as you guys know, I have a very fucked up nose. My nose is literally made out of my ear. I know that sounds really weird, but it's the truth, I'll link that video below. I guarantee you, my nose makes the snot for like seven people every day, all day. I used to get really bad nosebleeds growing up, I'm always snorting my snot, I'm always like going like this, like, you know, that. And so I realize I'm about to walk the red carpet and I don't wanna be like snotty and gross, so I go to like snort my snot back really hard. And before I do it, the sudden overwhelming urge to instead of just regularly snort my snot, to snort it in Jordan's ear. <laughs> overcomes my being. I decide that it would be really funny to get this close to my manager's ear and snort my snot in it. So I'm sure you can see where this story is going. So I think Jordan is next to me. I turn my head, I get this close to his ear, and I go <laughs> Ew, oh my god. Sorry if that landed on anyone at Playlist Orlando. And the second that I make that noise, what I think to be Jordan, but is actually a random man, pulls away and goes, oh my god. And I instantly pull away, I'm in shock. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. And I have this problem where when I when I do something wrong or I fuck up or I embarrass myself, I instantly start like over talking as if I don't already talk way too fucking much. And I'm like, oh my god, I thought you were my manager. I'm so close with my manager. Me and my manager are just like we're like best friends. And when I'm really close to someone, I get really disgusting. I'm already really disgusting in the long run. But like I'm really really disgusting when I'm really close to someone and I have a fucked up nose and I got a nose job and because I got a nose job, I snort my salt all the time and I can't walk red carpets until I snort my salt and I snort my salt in your ear and I thought you were my manager and I'm really really sorry and oh my god and I just start going on and on and on and on to this guy trying to apologize. I'm like I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just do that. Like my nose is fucked up. I thought you were my manager. I would never do that to you. I'm so sorry. I'm going on and on and on in this guy's face, like about to cry. And he just looks at me and he goes, I don't want to hear it. You're disgusting and that's disgusting. Ugh. And walks away, walks to the front of the line, starts walking the red carpet. And instantly, as he's walking this red carpet, all of the photographers rush forward. They're all screaming his name. The red carpet is instantly so chaotic. It's clear that he's very, very famous. And so I'm just looking at him, mortified, freaking out, wanting to cry. He walks off the red carpet, turns around, literally. Literally, if looks could kill, <laughs> like, gives me the death stare, like, I hope you die stare. And I just look at him and I'm like, I know. I deserve it. Walks into the party, and now I'm about to be next on this red carpet, so my manager walks back up next to me, and he's like, okay, like, are you ready to go? Are you excited for the red carpet? And I'm like, no, I'm not ready for the red carpet. You don't understand what just happened. You don't get it, you don't get it. And he cuts me off freaking out, and he's like, no, but did you just see that guy? And I'm like, what guy? And he's like, the guy that just walked the red carpet in front of you, like the guy that all those people were freaking out over. Did I just see that guy? Fuck yeah, I just saw that guy. And then I go to tell Jordan what happens, and he cuts me off again because he's an asshole. And he goes, no, that guy is like the Justin Bieber of Spain. He's one of the most famous people in the world. And then he turns my body to look around to outside of the building and there's just like 30 paparazzi outside like waiting, like screaming his name. Fans with signs for his name. He's like, all those people outside, they're here for that guy. He's so famous. He shouldn't be here. Like, you should try to get a photo with him. Like, it's crazy. He can't go anywhere in Spain. Like, he is the Justin Bieber of Spain. You mean the guy that just... 
that just walked the red carpet. The guy that was just like posing and then he like left and he's like in that room right now, like that guy, like right over there. And he's like, yeah, and I'm like, oh. I don't think I can take a photo with him or that I should bother him at all anymore because all of the contents of my nose were just audibly in his ear. <laughs> and then I had to walk the red carpet here are the photos. <laughs> And that is the story of the time that I snorted my snot in the Justin Bieber of Spain's ear. So not only is that why I'm single, why I'm disgusting, why people don't like me, why my manager doesn't like me, why I could probably be 10 times more successful than I am if I was like a polite, cute little girl, like I could have like hit on him, like who knows, you know, but like no. And now on to the next embarrassing story, which um, which is actually a sex story. I kind of want to eventually do an entire video where I tell embarrassing sex stories. I don't have that many. I like to think of myself as like a casual porn star, it's fine. But on times that I like slip up from being just like a perfect, I was gonna say freaky type pussy legend, but I, I realized that that might have been a little much. Tana, why are you demonetized? Um, this next story is about a time that I was definitely trying to be a freaky bad bitch and I really fucked up. I've never talked about this on the internet. I've never told this story. There's no proof of it anywhere. You will not be able to find it. You will not be able to find the person. You will not know any of that. And that's simply because I am way too ashamed of this story. I don't think I've ever felt such public humiliation, public mortification than this story, which I know public humiliation and sex don't normally go together. It's a very interesting story. I'm not even gonna tell you guys the time frame of life, but it was definitely a while ago. I was in a relationship, and my boyfriend at the time decided he wanted to take me out on a date. And so this was when I lived in Vegas full time to the Link Ferris wheel in Las Vegas Which is actually like one of the biggest Ferris wheels in the world Maybe one of the I think it is the biggest Ferris wheel in the United States. It's absolutely huge It's technically considered an observation wheel because it's not like little seats you sit in It's like big like studio apartment sized pods on this Ferris wheel that go all around Vegas And it has the best view of Vegas. It's absolutely beautiful. I've been on a few dates there I actually vlogged one a while ago. It's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it. Love the link Can't say I've gone back since this story can't say I I um, am not a little afraid to go back, but, and it was a weeknight, and so anything really touristy on random weeknights in Vegas is super empty, which is really cool for the locals because then you can experience it, but you don't have to deal with a bunch of tourists. It's often a lot cheaper for the locals. It's like a Tuesday night, we're gonna go to the link, it's gonna be empty, it's gonna be super romantic, super awesome, whatever. We both kept making jokes to ourselves on the way there, like, what if we were to fuck on the Ferris wheel? Because it's not like it's just like a seat or whatever, it's like a pod, and if you're in the pod alone, it's like you're in like, like a studio apartment, like all by yourselves, you know? And so we're like, okay, like if it's empty, it's meant to be, like let's get freaky. Like I definitely was in the stage of the relationship where I wanted to be like that freaky, like bad bitch girlfriend who's like way better than all of your exes and is like so much freakier and like crazy and like you're always gonna remember that time you like had sex on a bear as well. Like I wanted to be that bitch. So I was like ready, game on. I'm definitely very fearless when it comes to things like that. I think life is short, you know? Why not? And so we show up to the link, we get to the Ferris wheel. It's about to be our turn to go on and we're waiting in line and we realize there's no one else in line. There's no one else around us. No one. Just the workers and us. We were hoping to simply get a pod by ourselves, let alone the entire Ferris wheel. We didn't even think that would be a thing. And so we keep waiting and waiting, assuming other people are gonna show up. No one shows up. It's time to get on the Ferris wheel. We have this entire giant Ferris wheel all to ourselves. We get to choose which pod we want. We walk onto the pod. The Ferris wheel starts going. We start to make our way around and get up into the air. It moves very, very slowly so this was probably like 20 minutes elapsed. We're looking at the view, we're taking photos, it's super pretty, we're really happy. And then we both realized like, oh shit, we're alone, we're all by ourselves. Like we made jokes, like we didn't really think it was gonna be like a real thing, but like we are here by ourselves. Like this is kind of a once in a, once in a blue moon opportunity to say the least. Why don't we just do it? And so after debating going back and forth and back and forth, I'm like, fuck it. Like there's like seats inside of the thing. So we sit down on the seat and I'm like, it's go time. Whip your dick out. I'm sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> I'm low-key pussying out. We're both debating back and forth. He's like, do I actually do it? Like, what do we do? Like, should I, like, cover my dick with, like, my hoodie? And I'm like, honestly, no. We're all by ourselves. We check the entire space for cameras. We double check again. Time is now passing. We're about to be at the very top, which is by far, like, the most romantic part of it as well. So, like, if we're gonna fuck, like, now's the time, you know? We obviously don't want to be fucking, like, as it's coming back down because that's where all the workers are, whatever. So, we check the thing for cameras so, so, so hardcore. We both come to the conclusion that there are no cameras. We're like 100% sure. We're like, fuck it. Let's just do it. And so my boyfriend whips his dick out. He's sitting in this chair. I get down on my knees to like suck his dick. But I never talk about things like this on camera, like actually like sexual things. And I'm like feeling so
so virginal. And so I start like sucking his dick. Like I don't even know how else to say. Like his dick is in my mouth. I'm sucking his dick. And so the entire time while we were in the Ferris wheel, they were playing like a it's like a tour guide video that tells you all about the hotels in Vegas and all about how the link was built and there's like music and all this kind of stuff. And so all of a sudden the entire pod goes dark. All of the videos stop playing and simultaneously while his dick is in my mouth, the loudest possible alarm starts playing like wee wee. I'm a man with a penis and my voice cracks. Wee 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 as loud as possible. Red lights start blinking and the TVs immediately switch from videos telling you all about the link and all about Vegas and stuff to like these big screens that are basically saying like you are violating the like laws or terms or whatever of this Ferris wheel and whatever you're doing you need to stop now. And so immediately we're both freaked out like his dick goes soft I take his dick out of my mouth. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Um, we both now realize that somewhere in this pod there is cameras that we just missed and somewhere at the link there's a security team or security people that just watched me suck my boyfriend's dick. So much so that they sounded an alarm, stopped the videos and told us to stop. And so now we're both just standing there in this link pod trying to be like okay so let's look at the view I guess. Like we're also stuck up on this ferris wheel and we both come to the realization that this is like public indecency it's super illegal. So then we both just start freaking out like when we get off are we gonna get like arrested type shit. I don't even think I'm 18 at the time, so I'm like, oh my god, my mom's gonna have to come pick me up from sucking a dick on a fucking Ferris wheel. I'm like gonna start crying. My boyfriend's like, don't cry, this is supposed to be a good date. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, da -da -da. we also both know that since there is obviously cameras, the security team is probably watching us, like, dying laughing. Like, this is so fucking embarrassing. And so, another like 20 minutes go by while we're just standing in this pod, like, pacing, freaking out. I'm about to cry. We know people are watching us. We don't care about the view anymore. Our date's ruined. I'm ashamed. I'm literally praying to God, please don't let me get arrested for sucking dick on this Ferris wheel right now. We're weighing out all of our possible options, whatever. And so finally the Ferris wheel comes down. And this was already embarrassing enough. Like, even if we never saw the people that caught us or all that kind of stuff, like, even if we just went home and, like, nothing bad ever happened, this already would have been 10 out of 10 embarrassing, in my opinion. But as we're coming down off the Ferris wheel, we look and we realize all of the employees are, like, standing in a line, like, waiting for us to get off this Ferris wheel. And conveniently, it was also the last ride of the night before they closed, so every employee is there to, like, see us off. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe all of the employees are just there because they have to close it. Like, maybe they have no idea. Like, maybe just the security people saw. Like, let's not freak out. Let's not think worst case scenario, whatever. And so we walk off this Ferris wheel, and immediately all of these employees start dying, laughing, and clapping. Like, we are walking through, like, two lines of people, like, down the middle of them while they're all just looking at us like this. <laughs> giving us a round of applause while people are saying things under their breath like at least you tried the guy employees are looking at my boyfriend being like get it man like that shit's illegal like ha 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 like laughing all while giving us a round of applause while I'm walking like <laughs> we're leaving they're like trying to sell us photos of us like on the inside the photo employee lets us know that the cameras are inside of the TVs which I don't even know how the fuck that high-tech shit works but that is so embarrassing so that also probably means that that photo employee literally saw me with a dick in my mouth and so after we leave like a week later news breaks out and goes viral like viral all over Twitter all over social media all over Vegas news that a couple was arrested for having sex on the link Ferris wheel and it wasn't us like I I don't know if we did it and then a week later someone else did it and the link employees were just fed up and fucking arrested those people for like public indecency and whatever and it's crazy to me that to this day that information has absolutely never leaked like I was worried about it for months and months and months that like a link employee was gonna tweet about it or someone was gonna expose me or whatever or that obviously the photos and videos of it or the security footage was gonna get leaked and then I was gonna be like a fucking porn star I'm like I'm not ready to be a porn star yet and I definitely wasn't at the time and I was underage and like all this kind of stuff so yeah that was the story of the time that I got caught sucking a dick on on a Ferris wheel and receive an award-winning round of applause by every single employee of the company after I left. Even telling that story after it's done, I'm cringing so hard. I seriously wonder if that security footage still exists or if any of those Link employees like remember me or realize that was me. I'm very scared to see how this unfolds, but I'm doing it to myself. But yeah, as you guys can see, the sun is currently setting. Look at that fucking breeze. Yes, cover girl. Sister James is shaking. I hope you guys enjoyed these two random embarrassing stories. You guys already know this, but there's nothing more in the world that I love than sitting down and just telling you guys random fucking stories. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you guys want more embarrassing stories or more embarrassing sex stories, let me know because like I said in the beginning of this video, all I fucking do is embarrass myself. I'm a walking, living, breathing embarrassment at all times. So I would definitely love to keep this shit up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go enjoy Playlist Live, meet some more of you guys, meet up with my friends, maybe eat some food. Make sure to subscribe, like I said in the beginning of the video, click that little bell 
to turn your notifications on. Grab my phone case if you haven't. I'm so in love with it and so glad it's finally out. That will be linked below, as will TanaCon merch. Now I'm gonna shut the fuck up and I'm gonna let you guys go. I love you so much. Bye. Don't suck dick on Ferris wheels and don't ever snort snot in people's ears because you never know whose ear it's going to be. I can't believe I'm even saying that sentence like, like that's like a lesson. Tana, you're a fucking idiot and all of America knows not to snort their snot in people's ears. You're just the embarrassment. I'm gonna go. Bye.